Peter Buswell here with DrBLHockey.com and this video cheat sheet is going to take a look at the Shortel ECC and compare it with the Cisco UCCX. I think this will be of interest to engineers. I think it will be of interest to market research folks. Uh, typically, if you've already obtained your PBX, it's pretty much going to dictate uh, which call center you're going to get. So the comparison here is just uh, academic in nature, but we're going to take a look at specs, the basic configuration options for these systems, reporting, desktop applications, and uh, call flow scripting. Uh, take a look at the actual specifications. Now, both of these systems have gone through some significant changes since their you know, birth, since their introduction. Shortel is currently on Shortel 7, and uh, Cisco is currently on uh, UCCX 8. And I'll point out um, the current information that we have on these systems, uh, give you some of the history on how we got here, and share what I know about the future. But the discussion is predicated on the version 7 Shortel, Cisco 8, UCCX. So first place we're going to look is live agents. How many agents can this system support? Now in the Shortel uh, world, I'm getting these uh, facts off uh, Shortel's published specification off their website. A uh, thousand agents. Cisco claims 400 agents. Shortel will let you configure, so 1,000 agents uh, talks about how many agents are actively logged in and available to process inbound phone calls, uh, outbound calls. But how many can I have in my database? Uh, ECC says 2,000. Cisco says unlimited. Obviously, both systems run on servers, and things like memory and disk storage are certainly going to impact these numbers. Shortel 7 supports up to 100 supervisors. Cisco claims 42. IVR ports, um, and we'll talk a little bit more about IVR ports in a minute. Um, I used to think this number was closer to 300, but uh, I have um, some information that says it's 250. Cisco will support five, excuse me, 400 IVR ports busy our call completions. Now, I did attempt to contact Shortel product management, but I just couldn't get a response, so I'm, I'm kind of leaving that blank. Uh, you can draw some conclusions based on these numbers here and actually go into your Erlang B, Erlang C, and, and, and uh, calculate what you're going to need. I was hoping to get a spec. I couldn't get one from Shortel. Cisco specs. 6,000 uh, calls a busy hour. Skills, uh, short tell, 256. Cisco, 150. Uh, host connectivity is through uh, um, CTI ports. If you're an engineer, you'll understand that. If you're a, uh, if you're, you know, not into the nuts and bolts of these systems, don't, don't, don't worry about this. Um, hosts. So the Shortel ECC runs on a Windows um, base. So uh, historically Windows 2003, now we're looking at Windows 2008. Cisco, <clears throat> to be fair, Cisco had run this product on a Windows 2000, uh, actually, um, yeah, Windows 2000 server. Uh, but their entire product line moved away from Microsoft and moved to Linux. So uh, versions uh, 8 of the UCC is running along with the rest of the call manager product on a Linux base. What kind of database manages both these systems? The Shortel <clears throat> ECC runs on a MySQL database. And Cisco is using the IBM Informix database. 
Both systems support redundancy. And uh, we'll talk a little bit about how they handle it. My favorite subject is always licensing strategy. Yeah, I could tell you up front, Shortel has a, uh, a very simple, straightforward uh, licensing strategy. Cisco uh, is a bit more complex. I'll show you the differences. Um, and we'll drill down on the future content in each one of those. So <clears throat> what is it that we're looking for in our contact center? There is what I call the minimum daily adult requirement for contact centers. And clearly, you're going to have some requirement for IVR capability. And this is why before when we talked about the number of IVR ports, um, th this is why this becomes important, because IVR ports are how we prompt callers and how we collect information from callers. So in uh, minimally in a contact center, we're going to prompt and collect digits. In some configurations, we might be able to do uh, speech recognition. When it comes to automatic call distribution, you know what, what makes a contact center different than a call center is that uh, we deal with media types today that uh, far exceed just plain voice telephone traffic. So you're going to want to have contacts that are email and also web or chat enabled. What types of integration can we expect with our contact centers? So there's a telephony component, uh, the ability to do CRM integrations, um, the ability to have some type of OBDC connector to an external database. Uh, those are some of the kinds of integration capabilities that you're going to want to have in your call center. And what we're looking for here is what is the tool set available to us uh, that enables us to do these integrations uh, field level? In other words, what, what, uh, what has Shortel and Cisco put in place that enables us to address these requirements in the field without having to run back to the manufacturer for additional support? Shortill has done an excellent job in making a single portal for system administration. And uh, if you've worked with other systems, uh, sometimes you have a different interface for the PBX and a different interface for the voicemail. And Shortill has done a real good job of bringing that together uh, in one portal called the Shoreware Director. In the contact center, um, we're not quite there yet, uh, but I can see that the product is on its way to achieving that. Currently, uh, prior to version 7, actually, you had this uh, metaphor here called the shortware contact center. And this is where you set your system up. It's, it's the place you went to establish your agents and trunk groups and your IRN to uh, CTI port uh, interfaces, uh, set up um, your various IVR groups. Uh, and basically, this is where you program the system. Now, Shortel has in, in uh, version 7 forward uh, done away with this and uh, migrated this functionality to a web-based interface. I have some other videos if you're interested in that, but um, to use the scripting tool, you still uh, drop down to this exe file. And uh, I, I can see that in the future, the, the, the single portal that uh, Shortel has been working to maintain, they will achieve. Let's take a quick look at the UCCX editor, its components, some of the tools available. And um, I'll point out that this editor is able to run without the server attached. So if you're a consultant uh, uh, like myself and you're uh, jumping on an airplane to go someplace and work on someone's uh, contact center, 
it's nice to be able to open up your laptop, bring out your scripting tools and get to work. Uh, I don't need to be connected to the server to do this. There are uh, capabilities um, that being connected to the server would allow me to do that I can't do when it's in this mode. Uh, for example, this system has a debug capability, which is very, very cool. It has a, an ability to validate, which will uh, run through my script. It uh, won't tell me that the script is going to operate the way I intended to operate, but it will uh, tell me that from a syntax perspective, it is correct. But you have the ability, when connected to a server, to run your script, uh, insert breakpoints, uh, start uh, start points. So if there's a piece of the script that you want to test, you can actually uh, run it in the debug mode, which is uh, very exciting, uh, very helpful. In uh, the toolkit itself, uh, you have four panes of uh, working space. Uh, the space to my left here um, is the library of uh, Java beans uh, that I have to work with. Um, it is written in Java and therefore I have the ability to create some uh, uh, remote Java objects. Um, it has a fairly robust, very reacher, rich feature set. It uh, has capabilities that uh, provide alternative ways of retrieving data from outside the system, uh, specifically uh, HTTP triggers, um, which enable me to do XML, um, retrieve and write data to XML, uh, which is very useful. Um, I have the ability to manipulate documents and to upload and write documents based on um, activities within the contact center. There is a rich set of uh, actually ACD and ICM or intelligent call management about the only icons available that actually you know have to do with manipulating the phone call uh, which in Cisco's vocabulary is called a contact. So uh, you know things like connecting um, I find this uh, get reporting statistics very valuable tool that enables me to um, actually check the condition of let's say logged in agents and things of that ilk and to take uh, action based on uh, the reporting statistics. So that, that's very useful and set priorities and things of that ilk. There are a set of um, uh, media tools, uh, which have to do with uh, playing prompts and getting digits, strings, and, uh, you know, the, the minimum daily adult uh, requirements for manipulating uh, um, caller input, right? So I want to play them a prompt. I want them to input digits. This feature here is uh, really uh, exceptional, the ability to uh, record a file uh, to disk, which uh, so I can create an application in which I prompt the caller to speak stuff, and, and we can record that. There are a set of icons that have to do with uh, the speech recognition uh, capability that would be present if you had that uh, text-to-speech and uh, nuance or uh, speak right uh, servers in your deployment. Um, you wouldn't normally have them there uh, in a base system, but the library is here.